In the quaint town of Cedar Hollow, nestled between the whispering pines and the fog-veiled mountains, the old Carter House stood as a relic of times long past. Its weathered walls and creaky porches held the secrets of the Carter family, whose sudden disappearance one autumn had become the subject of whispered speculation and local legend. Samuel Carter, a freelance cybersecurity expert and father of two, had always been fascinated by the dark corners of the internet. His home office was a cluttered sanctuary of computers, books, and files on cybersecurity and cybercrime. But his obsession with the deep web began not out of curiosity, but necessity. It started when his youngest daughter, Ellie, then eight years old, had been victim to an online predator who'd contacted her through a seemingly innocent game. Samuel, fueled by anger and fear for his children's safety, dove into the underbelly of the internet, determined to understand and combat the digital threats lurking there. However, his investigation took a dark turn when he stumbled upon a hidden forum in the deep web titled The Shadow's Grasp. It was dedicated to the occult, with threads that ranged from the dark arts to paranormal events that reportedly ended in actual disappearances and tragedies. Samuel, ever the skeptic, initially dismissed these as hoaxes or urban legends reproposed for the digital age. I think he'd be proud of us, Ellie said softly, her hand resting on the back of John's chair as he navigated through a particularly complex encryption barrier. He would, John agreed, his voice steady. He taught us well, even if we didn't know it at the time. As night fell, they activated the security protocols their father had designed, a network of digital and arcane safeguards that enveloped the house. Outside, the shadows deepened, moving with an almost sentient fluidity, as if testing the barriers. But tonight, like every night since Samuel's departure, the darkness would not enter. Upstairs, in the quiet of her room, Ellie found herself looking out the window at the vast, starlit sky. There was a beauty to it, a reminder of the vastness of the universe and the smallness of their own struggles. It was out there, somewhere in that infinite expanse, that she liked to imagine her father, not lost but simply farther away, watching over them from beyond the shadows. And in that port, there was comfort. For though the darkness lingered, a constant reminder of the night their father sacrificed everything, so too did the light persist, in the love he had left behind, in the resilience of the children he had raised, and in the hope that one day, the shadows would recede forever. Thus, the story of Samuel Carter and his children found its end not in darkness, but in the light of stars, stars that watched over them, silent guardians in the night sky, whispering a father's love and a promise of protection eternal. The note he had left them lay open on the desk, his handwriting shaky yet determined, each word a testament to his sacrifice. Protect each other, it read, and remember that sometimes, the greatest bravery is in living, not in fighting. I love you, forever and always. Tears blurred their vision as they clung to each other, the reality of their loss sinking in. But amidst the grief, a resilient spark of courage ignited within them, fueled by the memory of their father's strength and love. They knew they could not let his sacrifice be in vain. Days turned into weeks, and the whispers about the Carter house grew within the town. Rumors swirled of the night Samuel Carter walked into the storm and never returned. Some said he had gone mad, chasing shadows that didn't exist. Others spoke of a more sinister tale, of ancient pacts and guardians of the dark. But for Ellie and John, the house remained simply the last place they had been a family. Determined to keep the darkness at bay, they began to study their father's notes and books. Samuel had prepared them in his own way, leaving behind his research, tools, and encrypted files filled with knowledge about the digital and mystical defenses he had employed. They learned, faster than they ever thought possible, driven by the need to protect their home and each other. One evening, as the sky painted itself with the colors of dusk, Ellie and John stood together in their father's study, looking over the systems he had set up. They had become proficient in their new roles, guardians by necessity, their lives forever altered by the legacy of their father's choices. With a heavy heart, Samuel opened the door, stepping out into the storm. 
The watchers parted to let him pass, their forms swirling with the wind, their eyes never leaving his. He walked into their midst, the wind and rain battering him, the whispers growing louder, demanding, insistent. I will go, Samuel said, his voice steady despite the turmoil within. Take me, and let my children live free of this burden. The watchers closed in, and the world turned dark, a swirling maelstrom of shadow and light. The pact was fulfilled, a father's final sacrifice to protect his children from the darkness he had once sought to understand. Back in the house, the storm cleared, and the sun rose on a new day. Ellie and John woke to find themselves alone but safe, a note from their father their only goodbye. In it, he told them of his love, his hopes for their future, and his final wish for them to live a life free from the shadows that had claimed him. And so, the story ends, not with peace, but with a promise, a father's love, a guardian's sacrifice, and the eternal vigilance that some must bear to keep the darkness at bay. In the quiet of the morning, as the first rays of sun pierced the remnants of the night storm, Ellie and John found themselves standing at the threshold of their father's study. The room, with its multiple screens still aglow, seemed to hum with an unseen energy, a lasting echo of Samuel's last stand against the darkness. The power flickered, then went out completely, plunging the house into darkness. Only the backup generator kept his systems running, the screen's alone source of light in the gloom. Then, the whispers started, soft at first, like the sighing of the wind, but growing steadily in volume and intensity. They were not alone. Figures emerged from the shadows, forms coalescing from the darkness, their eyes burning with that now familiar malevolent glow. They surrounded the house, a circle of watchers, their intentions unclear. Samuel stood, facing them through the glass, his hand on the cold surface of the window. You have kept your pact, the lead watcher intoned, its voice a chilling blend of many voices, male and female, old and young. But the darkness grows hungry, and your strength wanes. It is time for another to take your place. Samuel's heart sank. He knew this moment might come, but he had hoped for more time, more years to guard his children, to see them grow up safe and strong. But the pact demanded its due, and the Watchers were not known for their mercy. Choose, the Watcher commanded, the single word a death knell in the silent storm. Tears blurred Samuel's vision as he looked back at his children, sleeping peacefully, unaware of the sacrifices made to keep them safe. There was only one choice he could make, one path he could walk that would ensure their safety. As days slipped into nights and nights back into days, Samuel's existence became a balancing act on the knife edge of reality. He continued his work, delving deeper into the secrets of the deep web, now with a newfound purpose. His explorations were cautious, methodical, every step monitored by the unseen eyes of his pact keepers. He was both hunter and hunted in the digital shadows, protecting others from the threats he had come to know all too intimately. But as the weeks turned into months, the strain of his dual existence began to tell. The constant vigilance, the unrelenting tension of watching and being watched, wore at him. The darkness seemed to creep closer, a tangible presence that invaded even the sanctity of his home. His children noticed the change in him, the shadows under his eyes, the jumpiness of his gaze, the way he would murmur in his sleep, restless and tormented. One evening, as a storm gathered, dark clouds piling high like mountains in the sky, Samuel felt a change in the air, a thickening, a charge that pulsed like a heartbeat. The watchers were stirring, something was coming. He prepared himself, checking the wards he had placed around his home, symbols etched into door frames, windows lined with salt, every ritual and precaution meticulously observed. That night, as the storm broke, unleashing a torrent of rain and wind that lashed the house, Samuel sat in his study, monitors flickering with the overflow of data streaming in from his network of surveillance and detection. The digital world was alight with chatter, warnings of a breach, a surge of dark activity on the horizon. He was ready, or so he thought. Tears blurred his vision as he nodded slowly, his decision made. I accept. 
For my children, I accept. A murmur ran through the shadows, like wind through the leaves, and the figures converged around him. The air pulsed with power, the runes on the altar glowing with a fierce light. Samuel felt a searing pain as the pact was sealed, not upon parchment, but upon his very soul. As the ritual concluded, the figures receded back into the shadows, their eyes lingering on him a moment longer before disappearing into the dark. Samuel was left alone, the weight of his sacrifice settling upon him like a cloak woven from the night itself. He stumbled back through the woods, each step heavier than the last, his heart aching with a profound sorrow. When he finally emerged from the tree line, the first light of dawn was touching the sky, a new day beginning as his new life as a sentinel commenced. Back at home, he found his children still asleep, untouched by the horrors of the night. Samuel watched over them, his vigilance now a permanent part of his existence. The darkness had receded for now, but he knew it was not defeated. It lurked in the shadows, waiting for a moment of weakness, a breach in the vigil he must now eternally maintain. As the sun rose higher, casting light across the land, Samuel stood at the window, watching, waiting. The pact was sealed, his fate intertwined with the Watchers, an unbreakable bond forged in shadow and sacrifice. He was now a guardian not only of his children but of the boundary between the seen and the unseen, the light and the dark. Panic rose in Samuel's throat. He hadn't intended to make any pacts, his only desire had been to protect his family, to reclaim his children from the clutches of whatever darkness had claimed them. I did not know, he stammered, desperation seeping into his words. Please, I only want to protect my children. Protection requires sacrifice, the voice intoned, and with those words, the figure stepped forward into the light. They were cloaked in darkness, their faces obscured, but their eyes burned with a fierce, unnatural light. You must choose. For in the balance of these ancient woods, nothing is given without a price. Samuel's mind raced, his thoughts a tumult of fear and resolve. He thought of his children, safe at home but never truly safe as long as this darkness loomed over them. He thought of the life he had led, the risks he had taken, all the paths that had led him to this unholy clearing. With a heavy heart, he asked, what must I sacrifice? The thing most precious to you, more than even your own blood, the whispered answer came back a sound like the rustling of leaves in a dead wind. You must sacrifice your safety, your peace. You must bind yourself to the Watchers, become a sentinel as we are. Only then will your children be spared the darkness. The choice was cruel, the price unimaginable. To live in constant vigilance, a guardian against the very darkness he had fought to escape, was a fate Samuel could scarcely bear to contemplate. But the alternative, the risk of harm coming to his children was something he could not accept. Samuel's heart pounded in his chest, each beat echoing unnaturally in the oppressive silence of the clearing. He turned slowly, his light sweeping across the dense thicket that encircled him. It was then he saw them, the figures watching from the shadows, their forms blurred and indistinct, eyes gleaming with a malevolent light. They were silent observers, their presence a tangible weight on his soul. Despite his fear, Samuel addressed them, his voice carrying through the still air. I am here. I have followed your path. What do you want from me? No response came from the shadows, but the atmosphere shifted, the air growing colder, as if in anticipation. Samuel's breath formed clouds in the frigid air, and he shivered, not solely from the cold but from the realization that he was not merely surrounded by observers but by predators waiting for a sign of weakness. The silence was abruptly broken by a whisper, not a sound carried on the air, but one that seemed to emanate from within his own mind. The pact was made, now it must be sealed. Samuel's eyes widened in horror as he tried to comprehend the meaning of the words. What pact? I made no pact. The pact your blood has sealed, the whisper continued, each word a chilling caress against his mind. Your descent into the darkness, your trespasses upon sacred ground, your summons of the watchers. 
You have called us, and so we have come. Stepping outside, the night enveloped him, a shroud of whispers and watchful eyes. The tree seemed to lean closer as he made his way to the edge of the forest, the marked map in his hand. The woods were alive with nocturnal sounds, each snap of a twig, each rustle of leaves underfoot amplifying Samuel's fear. He followed the path marked on his map, the beam of his flashlight cutting through the darkness, a small circle of safety in the enveloping night. Deep in the heart of the woods, where shadows danced like spirits and the air hung heavy with the scent of decay, Samuel found the marked location. It was a clearing he had never seen before, a circle of stone surrounded by ancient trees, their branches gnarled and twisted into sinister shapes. In the center of the clearing, a stone altar stood, moonlight glinting off its smooth surface. The air here was still, the usual sounds of the forest silenced, as if the very earth was holding its breath. Samuel approached the altar, his light trembled in his grip, the beam flickering as if it too were afraid of what lay in the shadows. He examined the altar, his eyes tracing the ancient runes carved into its surface, each symbol seemingly alive, writhing under his gaze. The moonlight cast eerie shadows, and the air grew thick with a palpable sense of foreboding. His screen flickered suddenly, a soft distortion that rippled across the display. Samuel's heart skipped. He leaned closer, eyes narrowing. The screen stabilized, but now, there was a new message waiting in his private messages, its subject line a string of symbols that made his stomach clench. Opening the message, Samuel read the words, each one etching deeper into his dread, you cannot protect them forever. The darkness knows you're sent now. The message was unsigned, its origin encrypted beyond tracing. Samuel's hands shook as he read and reread the ominous words. A cold draft swept through the room, the air turning icy with unspoken threats. He was about to shut down the system when another message popped up, this one more urgent, they are not safe. You must come. The coordinates given were vague, pointing to a location deep in the woods, the same woods where he had found his children. A map was attached, a path crudely marked, leading deeper into the heart of the forest than Samuel had ever ventured. A decision lay before him, heavy and daunting. Leaving the safety of his home, venturing into the night to face whatever awaited in the dark woods, was madness. But the alternative, to do nothing, to wait for the darkness to possibly reclaim his children, was unthinkable. Gathering his courage, Samuel prepared a backpack with essentials, flashlights, batteries, a first aid kit, and a small, protective charm given to him by an old friend who believed in such things. He left a note for the children, telling them he would be back by morning, and to call Mark, the neighbor, if he hadn't returned. Night approached with a heavy inevitability, a curtain slowly drawn across the sky. Samuel tucked Ellie and John into bed, a storybook clutched in one hand, a flashlight in the other. The children, though exhausted, clung to their father, their eyes wide and alert. Will they come back for us, Daddy? Ellie's voice was a whisper, her small fingers tight around Samuel's. I won't let anything happen to you, Samuel promised, a fierce determination setting his jaw. He kissed their foreheads, leaving the door ajar as he stepped out, the soft glow of a nightlight casting gentle shadows. Downstairs, Samuel's home office awaited, its screens dormant and dark. He powered up his systems, the familiar hum of the computers a backdrop to his racing thoughts. The forum, the shadows grasp, still loomed in his browser history, a malevolent reminder of the night's terror. Samuel knew he needed more information. He had to understand the forces that had reached out from the digital void to grasp at his world. His fingers flew over the keyboard, diving deeper into the encrypted layers of the deep web, seeking answers, seeking protection. Hours slipped by, the only sounds the click of the keyboard and the soft ticking of the clock. Samuel stumbled upon thread after thread, each darker, more twisted than the last. Accounts of hauntings, abductions, deals with shadowy entities, all seemingly linked by a common thread of darkness that fed on fear and despair. They made their way back through the forest, 
the dawn breaking through the trees, casting light on their path. The horrors of the night lingered in Samuel's mind, a stark reminder of the fragility of safety, of the thin veil between their world and the darkness. As they reached their home, the sun fully risen now, Samuel looked back at the forest, its shadows receding with the daylight. But he knew, deep in his heart, that the night would come again, and with it, the darkness. And somewhere, deep in the depths of the deep web, the shadows whispered and waited, their appetite whetted by the fear they had tasted. The story was not over, it had merely paused, a breath drawn in the quiet before the storm. Back in the safety of their home, Samuel tended to his children, reassuring them with gentle words and warm embraces. The house, once a haven, now seemed less secure, the windows like eyes that might blink open at any moment. Samuel knew he could not let his guard down, the web that had entwined his family was vast and dark, and they had only escaped one of its many strands. As the day wore on, the normalcy of routine began to reclaim the Carter household. Meals were prepared, stories were read, and laughter slowly returned to the echoing halls. Yet, Samuel's mind remained vigilant, his eyes often drifting to the shadows that clung to the corners of the room. The guardian loomed closer, its form enveloping Samuel in darkness. He felt a coldness seeping into his bones, a terror like he had never known coursing through him. But he stood firm, focusing on his children, on his love for them. A long, tense moment passed, then the guardian receded. The moans from the pit grew softer, sadder. You have shown your worth, the guardian whispered. And with those words, the darkness of the pit lightened ever so slightly. Two small forms, huddled together, slowly became visible. Ellie and John, looking scared but unharmed, were slowly lifted from the pit by unseen hands and set gently on the ground near their father. Samuel rushed to them, dropping to his knees and pulling them into his arms. They clung to him, their small bodies shaking. You did it, Daddy, Ellie whispered, her voice muffled in his jacket. We were so scared, John added, his words choked with sobs. I know, I know, Samuel soothed, his relief immense but tempered by the knowledge of the darkness that still surrounded them. The figure, who had watched the reunion silently, now spoke again. You have retrieved what is yours, but remember, the darkness is always watching, always hungry. You must guard your light carefully. With that, the figure faded into the forest, leaving Samuel with his children, the weight of the figure's warning heavy on his heart. The guardians of the pit feed on fear and despair. You must show courage, prove your resolve. Only then will they allow you to take back what is yours. Samuel's heart pounded in his chest, his mind racing with fear and doubt. But the thought of his children, lost and afraid in that terrible darkness, steeled his resolve. He nodded, taking a deep breath, and approached the edge of the pit. The air grew colder as he neared, the moans louder. He could now see the eyes of the guardians, glowing faintly red in the dark, watching him, gauging his every move. I am here to retrieve my children, Samuel declared, his voice stronger than he felt. I fear not the darkness nor the creatures that dwell within it. A silence fell, the forest holding its breath. Then, a rumbling from the depths of the pit, as if the earth itself were responding. One of the guardians, a shadow within shadows, rose up. Its form was nebulous, shifting and pulsing as if made of smoke and night. It towered over Samuel, its presence oppressive, overwhelming. You have courage, it hissed, its voice a cacophony of whispers. But courage is not enough. Why should we release them to you? Samuel thought of his children, of the light they brought into his life, the joy and love. He thought of their laughter, their innocence. And he realized what he needed to offer. I offer you my fear, Samuel said, his voice trembling as he spoke the truth of his heart. Take it. Use it. But let my children go. As they ventured deeper into the woods, the air grew colder, the darkness thicker. The park vanished, replaced by a twisting trail of shadows and whispers. 
The figure led him to a part of the forest so dense, the trees seemed to absorb all light, leaving them in a darkness so complete, it felt almost solid. Here, the figure stopped, turning to face Samuel, who could barely see the outline of its form. Prepare yourself, the voice whispered. They are here, but so are the ones who took them. You must not show fear. Samuel's breath fogged in the icy air as he tried to steady his nerves, the dark pressing in on all sides. The figure gestured to a gnarled tree, its bark twisted into grotesque shapes, as if tormented. Beneath it, the ground was darker, a pit that seemed to absorb any light that dared to touch it. This is the place, the figure stated, its voice a cold hiss that seemed to slither through the underbrush. Samuel peered into the darkness of the pit. There was movement, subtle but unmistakable, a shifting, a stirring of shadows. As his eyes adjusted, he saw them, figures, barely discernible, moving languidly, their forms distorted and elongated by the darkness. A low moan drifted up from the pit, a sound of despair so profound it chilled his soul. Your children are there, the figure whispered, pointing to the pit. To retrieve them, you must enter the darkness. You must convince the guardians that you are worthy. How? Samuel's voice cracked, the horror of the situation tightening his throat. Minutes stretched into hours. The forest around him seemed to close in, the mist growing thicker, darker. Then, just as he was about to give up hope, the ground at the base of the tree began to stir. Earth and leaves shifted, and from beneath, a faint sound began to emerge, a child's voice, crying softly. Frantically, Samuel began to dig with his hands, the earth cold and wet beneath his fingers. The crying grew louder, more desperate. Just as he thought he would uncover the source, a shadow fell over him. Looking up, his blood turned to ice. Standing before him was a figure, cloaked in darkness, its face obscured by the hood of its robe. Only its eyes were visible, glowing faintly red in the dim light. It reached out a hand towards Samuel, who felt an overwhelming force pulling at him, drawing him closer. The voice that came from the figure was chilling, a whisper that felt like it was spoken inside his head. You have come seeking that which you have lost. But some doors, once opened, cannot be closed. Will you pay the price to see them returned? Samuel, his heart hammering in his chest, could barely nod, his voice a whisper. Anything. The figure's smile was a mere shadow, but it chilled Samuel to his core. Then follow where I lead, and do not hesitate. What lies ahead is not for the faint of heart. Turning, the figure began to walk deeper into the forest, its form seeming to blend in and out of the shadows. Samuel, driven by a desperate need to find his children, followed, each step taking him further away from the world he knew, into a realm where the boundaries between reality and nightmare blurred. His research was abruptly interrupted by a loud crash upstairs. Heart pounding, Samuel rushed to investigate, only to find a window open and a cold breeze flowing in, disturbing the stillness of his home. No sign of forced entry, no one inside. Yet, on the sill, he found a small, hand-carved figurine of an owl, its eyes inlaid with something that shimmered in the moonlight, watching him. Fueled by a mix of fear and anger, Samuel took the figurine to his study, examining it under the light. It seemed ancient, and as he turned it over in his hands, he noticed etchings on the bottom, symbols that matched some he had seen in the forum posts about occult rituals. That night, sleep eluded him. His home no longer felt safe, it felt like a cage, a trap set around him, waiting for whatever had taken his children to return. As dawn broke, Samuel made a decision. He would go back to the forest, to the ancient oak, with the figurine in hopes of finding a clue or provoking a response from whoever, or whatever, was responsible. Returning to the woods, the morning mist thick around him, Samuel felt every sound magnified, every crack of a twig like a gunshot. The forest seemed alive, watching him, the ancient trees whispering secrets in a language lost to time. He reached the clearing and the great oak. 
The ribbons were still there, fluttering gently in the breeze. Placing the figurine at the base of the tree, Samuel stepped back and waited, his breath forming clouds in the chilly air. Samuel ran. He ran until his lungs burned and his legs ached, never looking back, the screams following him all the while. When he burst through the tree line and back onto his property, the world seemed to lurch back to normal. The sun had risen fully now, casting light on his once peaceful home. But nothing was the same. His children were gone, taken by something he could not understand, something connected to the dark world he had infiltrated. Sitting in his study, surrounded by the screens that seemed now like gateways to another world, Samuel felt the weight of his previous night's intrusion into the deep web. He knew without a doubt that his foray had drawn the attention of something sinister, something that did not respect the boundaries between the digital and the physical. He tried to reach out again on the forum, his fingers trembling as they typed. No response came. The silence in the digital ether was oppressive, suffocating. As night approached, the house felt smaller, the shadows deeper, and every small noise a harbinger of doom. Samuel's eyes kept darting to the windows, half expecting to see faces pressed against the glass, watching him. Determined to find answers, he delved back into the deep web, this time taking every precaution to shield his identity and location. Hours slipped by as he navigated through encrypted files and bypassed firewalls, drawn deeper into the labyrinthine underbelly of the internet. His search uncovered a pattern of disappearances linked to the forum, each case involved individuals who had delved into its secrets, only to lose something or someone dear to them. His search led him to the edge of the woods bordering his property, where he found a set of small footprints leading into the thicket. Heart in his throat, Samuel followed, the branches snatching at his clothes like hands pulling him back. The deeper he went, the darker it got, the canopy blotting out the weak morning light. In the heart of the forest, he came upon a clearing he had never seen before, despite having roamed these woods since childhood. In the center stood an ancient oak, its trunk wide and gnarled, roots twisting through the ground like serpents. Tied around the tree were two small ribbons, one pink, one blue, belonging to his daughter and son. Ellie. John. His voice was a desperate whisper, torn from his throat. There was no answer but the rustling of leaves and the core of a distant crow. As he approached the tree, the air grew colder, his breath misting in the air. The ground around the oak looked disturbed, as if recently dug up and then hastily covered. Samuel fell to his knees, digging through the cold earth with bare hands. What he uncovered made his blood run cold, a small, antique locket containing a faded photograph of two children. The image was old, very old, but the children bore a haunting resemblance to Ellie and John. Suddenly, the woods were alive with whispers, the sound swirling around him, growing louder with each passing second. The words were indistinct, yet they filled him with an inexplicable terror. He stumbled back, clutching the locket, as the whispers converged into a single, horrifying scream that echoed through the forest. One evening, after tucking his kids into bed, Samuel returned to his study to delve deeper into this mysterious forum. The glow of his monitor cast ghostly shadows across the room as he navigated through cryptic posts and eerie threads. His focus was broken by a sudden message that popped up on his screen, seemingly from nowhere, leave while you can. Chilled, Samuel glanced around the shadow-filled room, half expecting to see someone, or something, watching him. Shaking off the unease, he typed a response, demanding to know who was messaging him. The reply was almost instantaneous, they took my kids. The message struck a nerve. Samuel tried to probe further but no further messages came. His heart thumping loudly in his chest, Samuel couldn't shake off the feeling of dread that settled over him like a cold shroud. As he finally decided to log off, his computer screen flickered violently and shut down abruptly, leaving him in near darkness, save for the moonlight trickling in through the window. The next morning, Samuel woke to find his children's rooms empty. 
Their beds were untouched, as if they hadn't slept in them at all. Panic set in as he searched the house frantically, calling their names. When there was no sign of them inside, he burst out into the yard, his cries disappearing into the thick morning fog.